the academic code is fairly clear that authorship should reflect the contributions to the project. Uh, so what do contributions mean? It could be something like collecting the actual data, uh, being present at the inception of the idea, the inspiration of the idea, uh, being engaged in the writing process, the revision process, perhaps financial support for the project. All those in kind of an equity sense are inputs into the project. Uh, and so in the end, the authorship order ought to reflect that. Uh, there shouldn't be someone who's only on the first slot because they're the most eminent. The person that's on the first slot ought to have done the most contribution to that project. Whether or not you're an author on a paper is really a function of whether you've had a significant contribution to that project. So simply proofreading um, a version of it, checking some references or something like that typically isn't considered worthy of authorship. My experience is that the lead author is always the individual who takes the responsibility, the intellectual responsibility to fully develop the idea that might have been originated with a pair, a trio, or even more, uh, even in larger group. But the individual who is the first author is going to be the person who stimulates the intellectual contributions for that entire project. It is the faculty member's job to get the student to do a good job. It is the faculty member's obligation to develop and nurture the student. And it is absolutely not expected that the faculty member should be an author. The faculty member may be an author, may be rewarded, but it must be at the student's choice. Now if we go above and beyond the dissertation to really having a directive role and contributing to the journal submission, helping to rewrite, helping to edit, helping to manage the review process, then that deserves authorship. Uh, some people argue that the student should never have a faculty member there. On the other hand, some students want to have the faculty member there to say thank you for all the work. I think it's completely a uh, student-driven issue. It is extremely difficult for the faculty member to exert any pressure whatsoever because the student is in such a sensitive situation. So in my experience and what I do is I always assume that the student, if he or she wants me on the final paper, he or she will ask me and that's the moment when I become an author. In my view, under no circumstance does a faculty member have any right whatsoever uh, to demand that he or she be a part of a paper that has been generated by and written by a student. Uh, in most situations, the student will be the lead author um, on, in, on projects coming out of the dissertation. I've personally been involved with doctoral students who did terrific projects. Uh, for some reason, after they finished with the program, they landed in a place where publication maybe just wasn't so important to them. And the fact is, the project would simply never see the light of day if not for the maybe the dissertation chair or some other committee member stepping up to really take the reins of the project. So then you have that conversation again about, you know, would you like to see this through? If so, we're going to have to have someone else take a lead role. Uh, but those, those are really exceptions. I mean, the Academy Code is very clear on this. If I put my name on this for this conference, you can put my name on that for that conference, and we both get into the conference program. It goes back to the issue that, in the end, authorship conveys something. It conveys a contribution. Under no circumstance, in my opinion, is it appropriate to collaborate in a manner in which I include another faculty member or a colleague's name on a paper in exchange for that colleague, faculty member, including my name on yet a different paper. An author implies you did a lot of work, you did deep work, and that you are a legitimate member of that group of people who wrote that paper. That's the sort of thing that can lend you an academic jail. I mean, that, that's clearly a blatant violation of, of anybody's interpretation of what a meaningful contribution to a piece of scholarly work um, uh, means. It's also a stupid thing to do, by the way, because you're out there, if you're a student again, um, maybe you've done this with a, you know, a fellow student a couple of times while you're at Academy, that thing is showing up as a presentation that you were taking uh, ownership of. You show up on your first job talk, you know nothing about this project whatsoever, and a hand pops up in the back of the room saying, I love this paper you did at Academy last year. Tell me a little bit about your measure of moral courage that you used in that paper. You're going to be standing there fat, happy, and stupid, and that job is going out the window. Um, so it's not only a blatant violation of the spirit of what authorship really means, um, it, it's just a stupid thing to do.